here's a black and white I picked up a little while ago. It's an Emerson set. It's got a uh, wood finish on it. I think that's some kind of a laminated wood finish anyway. It's got twin speakers. And I believe it's a 23 inch CRT. Let's turn this one on and see how it looks. This is presently picking up a signal over the air. I don't know. I can't remember if I have antenna hooked up. We'll find out in just a minute. What I think I'll do is I'll take a video of it operating. Then I'll come back with some chassis so shots and talk a little about, bit about the work that was done. Okay, let's see here. Let's see the fine tunes off a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's worse. Sorry. Oh. There we go. Anyway, it's got a pretty good picture. When I got it, it had a nice strong CRT. This is the one I watch a lot of my black and white stuff on. I can see a little bit of an issue going on over here. I'm not sure if that's... Yeah, you can see here, this little bit of black, that's not good. That means the, uh, the picture's not completely scanned inside the CRT, putting it on the uh, raster like that helps to show that up. Let me adjust this again. Let me see how the... I don't think it even has an antenna hooked up. There we go. It's me just touching it. I see I'm going to have to look at the uh, picture centering and see if I can get that. Make sure it's uh, centered properly and it's not uh, due to a weak rectifier that's keeping the B plus down. Anyway, the plan is to uh, turn around. I'll take the back off so you see the inside of it. I kind of like this little set. You'll see in a few minutes the back's on. Okay, I've uh, lit it. I hooked this little wire up to it for the antenna. That's not much of an antenna, but as you can see, that edge thing seems to have gone. That might have just been it hadn't uh, fully warmed up yet. This one uses a um, 5U4 for the rectifier, a tube uh, power supply. The, the 5U4 maybe get a little bit weak. Maybe the capacitors are just, uh, I don't know, who knows. I thought I replaced the caps on this, but I'm not sure in the power supply. But you see, it's got a pretty good picture. It's got a little bit of black showing down there, so I do still need to adjust the uh, centering. And I'll do that when I get the back off, assuming it's a... Uh, Builds the image out. It seems like the linearity looked pretty good there. I'll play around the contrast a little bit here. Here's the contrast. You can see it gets pretty dark there. Way overdone. That's minimum contrast. Anyway, that's that's more uh, video content. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, that's that. This is the back of the Emerson tuner. <laughs> Remnants of internal antenna, which I don't use. It's just, that's a wreck. The wire just falling apart, literally. Give your tuner. Uh, it's like a, be a 4 by 6 speaker on that side. And on that side. It's a rather nice, tight, compact, vertical chassis. Flyback sits inside there, protected by its nice asbestos cover. That's nice, don't mess with that. Uh, here's the real trick it uses a 5U4 rectifier tube and a nice big power transformer and a bell fuse. I like all this stuff because that's kind of it's kind of nice on a cheap black and white set to have a uh, power transformer and no, uh, so it's not a hot chassis, which is always a good thing. Uh, it's got the RCA 
23CP4CRT. It tests very strong. Um, you can see I did some work on the chassis. Here I'm using my cheap 224. Uh, that's a point uh, two two cap that were replaced. I believe my original problem on this set was AGC related, and those caps are AGC filters, and it was a it was a wreck. And I ended up screwing up the alignment, <laughs> thinking that was it in my early days. Turned out it was a bad caps in there. And they were brown drops, and they were I think they were either I think it was open. I can't remember for sure. Anyway, that was a problem. You see these other brown drops. If you look closely, you'll see the little silver dots painted on them. That's me pulling the cap out and testing it to see if it was good or not. You see a few more cap replacements. I assume they were leaky or bad because I obviously didn't replace them all. Uh, this guy has the original filter cans. That might account for some of the uh, slightly slow to come up to full uh, size and width. If they're old cans, they might be a little bit leaky. Maybe they have to warm up. I don't know. I suppose I could replace them, but I don't think I replaced them. Let me see if I can see if there's cuts here or not. Well, it looks all original. That's probably the original can. Uh, so I, I did some work on the bottom of the chassis. I don't know if you'll be able to pick up on that, but you can see a few yellow caps in there. I did some work there. Um, oh, this is probably the biggest thing I had to deal with. You'll see this black tape covered uh, board. I'm trying to get a picture of that. It's kind of hard to get get it, but it's right here. Get really close, maybe you can see it. Uh, that was the vertical integrator. It was originally one of those uh, coupe-like type devices where you've got a combination of resistors and capacitors all built into a ceramic package. And it, this TV presented with slowly the vertical lock became weaker and weaker to the point where it wouldn't lock at all. And that was a... It's pretty easy to fix that. I just had to... I just rebuilt it onto a small PC board. Uh, recall right I was actually took the board and carved the uh, circuit onto the, tr the solid cladding on the back and then solder out the components it worked pretty well see I do have a width adjustment I noticed I don't think I'll play with it but that's a width adjustment I think all it does is just absorb some energy out of the uh, flyback that drives the width side of the yoke so the more energy that absorbs the less it's left over for the yoke I think that's how that works <sighs> I don't really remember what these two were for. I think they were AGC related, but I can't remember for sure. Let's see if it says over here. I'm looking at the uh, built-in schematic. No, I see it telling me what tubes are on it, but I don't see... Oh wait, nope, nope. No, I just don't see anything talking about what's on there. And I don't see anything up here if I look real close. I honestly don't remember what that what those two pots do. But anyway, that's the back side of it. Oh interesting, look at this. Got a pot with a very long cable. I think that's the volume. Could be, yeah. I think that's the volume control. So rather than running a long cable to a pot on a on the uh here, like they did for the other controls, they run a long metal cable in the pot right here and probably reduces hum I guess I don't know seems kind of strange uh, don't see anything else as notable about this set that's an interesting high voltage setup <laughs> I guess there's just not a voltage here to worry about uh, putting a cap on that I'm pretty sure that's the way it was I see some kind of a some kind of a tag I'm trying to shock myself I don't know what that's all about. I can't read it. Anyway, that's the back. Hope you enjoyed the Emerson. Thank you very much. You know, I got to thinking that it might have been like being case scanner that simply wasn't making a full sweep of the scan. Anyway, I uh, tried it one more time and got it as good as I could and left the black margins on the top and the bottom. 
got the uh, linearity as, as much as I could get it right. Uh, I'd have to I'll have to look into the um, the scanning that's going on with BK, see what's happening there. Probably put it on a more modern era TV that I know works right, and then I can confirm. You know, basically set up the B and K to a known good receiver to make sure it's linear and everything else is good on its side. Because frankly, this picture looks pretty good. Uh, let's play the contrast a little bit here. There you go. That's a nice picture there. Good brightness. Some pretty well lit around. Everything looks pretty decent. You know, I'll take the picture off. I'll take the back in a few minutes.